Well, hi, woodworking friends. Another week has gone by, and this week I hopefully will complete this uh, bandsaw sled project that we've been talking about for, this will be the third week, and we've got quite a bit to cover today, so we'll get right with it. Okay, first of all, here's, I've got the, my sled sitting here on my workbench, and um, get this piece of wood out of the way here. Uh, this is, my fence is actually really simple. It's a miter gauge off of an old table saw that I used to use. And then, as you see, I've built this fence. And this fence is just approximately the length of my, of my uh, uh, sled. And then I've made myself a little bit of a clamp here out of a piece of wood and a bolt and a thumb screw so that you can you can tighten that down on the edge of the sled and hold it in place once you're ready to to make your cut. The other thing I've got going on here, take the clamp off and you'll see that this is a removable fence and this fence is uh, for doing resaw work. See I've got, here's where the blade sets and the guide wheels on on the the blade and then I've got a high fence that's behind toward me uh, on the bandsaw so that you can have a good stable point here of reference for resawing. It works really good. Anyway, uh, we'll get on with things. Anyway, we cut a board uh, the length of our of our uh, and basically all it has to be is from the end of your fence to the center point here. Uh, and then you'll run this through and then you'll determine how much drift you have. The first thing to do, of course, is to line your fence up with this kerf that's cut in here that you made when you built your sled and slid it onto the table. So then, to begin with, your fence needs to be uh, exactly parallel with with this uh, this curve. Okay. Then you make your first cut. We decide how wide a board is that we want to use, and then once we've done that, then I take a piece of of masking tape, just any old tape will do. Just tear off a little strip of it and about one inch back from from this end of the of the fence we'll just lay a, that little piece of of uh, scotch or duck can't say the right tape today, masking tape down there on the table. And you can either do it now before you make your first pass or if you want to you can wait till after you make your first pass and you've got your your uh, fence locked down so it's not going to move so then put your tape down and to begin with take your ruler or whatever you've got handy measure about an inch back from the end of your of your fence I'll explain that a little more here in a minute. And then draw a line with pencil right here on your tape. Okay, your first cut then is going to slice off a piece off of this board that you you have a perfect edge on this and you do that on the, on the table saw. First of all, joint one side and then saw the other side so that you have two parallel sides. And then take your calipers if you have some hopefully you do, and measure about one inch back from the end here. Measure, take a reading, go down here to the other end, somewhere approximately toward the end, and take another reading. They should be, if your fence is correct on your table saw, they will be uh, very much parallel. That's the first step that you need to do. 
Okay, the next, uh, once you've done that, then you put your board in here, and of course you're on the table saw, uh, on the band saw, sorry, and run it through. Once you've run it through, then you've cut off like 30 or 40 thousandths off of the edge of the board here. The next thing that you want to do is measure back about one inch and mark this board on, on the top. Call that A and then come back here line up this this pencil mark that you put on there with the end of the fence and then uh, while you're on the on the bandsaw the leading end of the teeth is where you want to mark so then you mark that and call that B. Okay then we'll take that the difference between A and B is going to tell us how much we want to set the drift, uh, set the fence to correct for the drift. And we'll get to that in just a second. Right now I need to tell you about this little gizmo. Remember my slide that I have here goes in and out, you know, for doing circles. Well I've also got one a slide that I've got this little gizmo on here so that I've got something to reference by if I want to to uh, uh, get an, a re re reproducible dimension then I can set this to whatever width that I want this piece to be clear down to just a few thousandths of an inch and lock it down and then put my piece of wood in pull my fence over until it's tight against it, lock it down, and run my piece through. Then the second time, I move my fence again, leaving this in the same position, run it through again. And each piece that I'm taking off is going to be almost exact re reproduction of the one before. So this is just some scrap wood that I made this out of. You can, you can make whatever you want. I've seen some that have rollers on the end here. I put a little uh, floor glide thing that they put on the bottom of uh, of chair legs and stools and stuff like that to keep from marring up the floor. Just a little piece of, of high-tech plastic with a nail in it and you just drive it into the end of that piece of wood. But nothing fancy, but it works. Okay, let's go over to the bandsaw. Okay, I'll admit I've cheated just a little bit. I've already squared up my fence uh, with the kerf behind the blade here and locked my my fence down so that I can make my first pass. And like I said earlier, we got to have between point A and point B have to be exact when they come off of the table saw. So we'll run this through and see how it works out. See what we've got. Got my calipers turned on. And then my point A is where I'm going to take my first measurement. Oh, by the way, the reason I came back like this, uh, one inch, is because the first part of your cut that you make with the bandsaw might be a little bit out of alignment. This gives you a more accurate measurement if you come back about an inch. Okay, there we have 1.65.5 inches. Now we go to point B, which is where I told you that the bandsaw blade, the front of the blade, uh, the distance from the back of the of the fence. Okay, 1.649. Okay, let's go back here. This one again, 1.658. It's not all that bad, really. You know, we're four thousands and five thousands 
we're only about a thousand soft. So that isn't too bad. Okay, the last little bit we need to talk about on this uh, adjusting our fence is that uh, the board that we cut, we have uh, measured the difference between point A and point B. In my case, it just so works out that my fence is twice as long as the distance from the front of the bandsaw blade to the back end of the of the fence. So it's quite easy to figure out. So I'll just take the difference between A and B, the width here with our calipers, and then I multiply it by two because my fence is twice as long as the distance from the bandsaw to the to the back of the of the fence. That gives me that times two and then <clears throat> and that should give us the, the number of thousandths of an inch that we need to adjust our the end of our fence. So we just uh, you remember we put the piece of tape down earlier so that we know where the fence is. So then we need to move the thing forward toward the blade or backward away from the blade to get the correct drift correction on the on the bandsaw. I could go into some mathematics on how to do that, but the easiest way to do is just what I explained to you and take your number of thousands time to go back to the to the back of your fence with a feeler gauge and move the fence on the the tail of the fence plus or minus enough to correct and it'll take you a couple of times to take care of it. Kind of a rule of thumb is if, let's see if I can remember this, if uh, your drift is getting wider at point B than it is at point A, that means that you need to move the tail of your of your fence closer to the blade and vice versa depending on which way you need to go. And so just take a feeler gauge or something like that and you can measure the distance that way uh, that you need to m move your fence. And that's basically all I can give you for information on the way this works. This is going to be the last thing <coughs> on this table saw that I'm going to talk about. Uh, I've got a setup here where I can swing this this auxiliary fence back and forth to get different positions that I want on the, on the saw and that way I don't have to take the fence off or mess around with anything and uh, you can figure out how to do this but basically what I did was to cut a an arc back here that matches up with with the carriage bolt that I have running through here and I can just swing that back and forth to whatever position I need to cut, make the cut. Say for example I want to cut at say 45 degrees or something like that then I can come around to that point and then set up with the backing board so that I don't cut into my into my fence and then I'll put my stop block like so put my piece of wood that I'm going to cut off and up against the stop block and run it through the saw. I've got about four, well it is four, exact number of uh, different YouTube sites that you can go to if you'd like to in order to uh, uh, get more information on making precision circle cutting jigs and whatnot. The first one I'd like to mention is uh, Tom Casper and the way to find you can p just put in Tom Casper and and it will come up but uh, it, it is called uh, precision circle cutting and he has a pretty simple way uh, of doing uh, single circle cutting situations where you only have one size that you need to work with and so he just takes a piece of plywood and makes a, makes a sled and uh, puts a center point in there 
for turning a circle. Uh, in his situation, he has to drill a hole all the way through the, the circle, in the middle of the circle, in order to, to make his work. But that that's fine for most projects. The second one that I want to mention is Patrick's workshop. And his video is called DYI Bandsaw Circle Cutting. And he has, has a pretty tricky little way that he puts uh, his uh, jig together for cutting circles. Totally different than what I had. So, you know, it might, might be something you'd like to look into. And then the third one comes from Winkies, it's spelled W-I-N-K-Y apostrophe S, Woodworking Tips, T-I-P-S. And the video is called Bands Bandsaw Circle Cutting Jigs. Imagine that. And of course our fourth one that I'd like to mention has kind of an interesting name. He calls himself uh, Tree on a Hill Workshop. Hmm. That makes you wonder what the tree on a hilltop is. Anyway, uh, the video is called Perfect Circle Bandsaw Jig. So there you have it. There's uh, some other places that you can look, get some more ideas. And if you're like me, you enjoy just cruising around on YouTube and finding what you can see. There's lots out there to be seen. I've only mentioned four of them. Uh, there's, I bet you there's 150 or more available that you can watch. And they all have good ideas. They're all just a little bit different. And so, you know, variety is the spice of life. So, until next time, this is Wayne signing off. And I would encourage you to uh, subscribe to my channel if you're interested in the stuff that I'm putting on and uh, click the like thumbs up down below here and if you have any comments uh, on what we've done here and if you have any questions or anything on what we've done uh, please uh, post your comments I'd be glad to get back to you and answer as best of my, of my ability uh, and maybe you have a really neat idea, I encourage you to put it on YouTube. It's a lot of fun. And I'll tell you what, it doesn't take very much um, equipment to do this. I have a little cannon uh, that I've had for uh, quite a few years. It's just a little digital camera that has a, has a video capability on it. And for lighting, what I've got basically is a couple of uh, way mini fluorescents is what I was trying to think of. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine me not having anything to say. Anyway, they're little mini fluorescents and uh, I've got two of them right now that are shining on me and they're pretty much a, a pretty good daylight type uh, light and you can also use fluorescent tubes uh, just plain old shop lights that works good but it doesn't take much to do this and you know you find out how stupid you sound sometime when you're talking to a camera anyway that's it for today hope you've enjoyed this next week we'll be moving on to something else possibly in maybe furniture repair thank you very much